just starting right here I just measured one foot and then two foot and then three feet and that way I use it um, when I'm making rows in the garden if I want to know how far apart to do my rows I have my hoe right there with me Let's see what else do we have here is this a pitchfork yeah now this is different from the fork she just showed you because this is more for like pitching hay and the other fork she had was like for digging in the dirt, but if you did that, these aren't as strong. But this is great for when you want to pitch straw or leaves or hay, when you're putting it on your garden, maybe mulch. for your compost, your mulch, yeah. that's true. Um, works really easy and it's just something, you know, to make it go smoother. Yeah, it's a nice height too, you know, it's perfect just to pitch your hay and your leaves and whatever else. What, we, what is this? Why don't you tell us about? The good old fashioned rake. <laughs> Garden rake. Yeah, this is the one everybody always steps on his Yeah. <laughs> um, these are great to like if you've already broken up some ground or something, you want to even out your dirt, and you rake over it. You can rake leaves with it, especially yeah. if they're wet leaves. Actually, a heavy gardener rake works really good if you have wet leaves to use. Or if you've laid gravel down on your path and you want to oh, smooth yeah. the gravel out, this works perfect because yeah. it's nice and sturdy and strong. Definitely. This is definitely a good tool to have when you're gardening. And this is an interesting little thing we found at a, um, a yard sale, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it was kind of like Somebody an antique yard sale or something. Selling old tools or something. And it's a lot like a hoe, except it's like, you know, a pitchfork down here, which actually we call it the claw. But this thing works really great for like in between your rows of uh, vegetables or in, even in between your plants. It works great just chopping up and cultivating yeah. and really works great for um just like getting out big weeds or yeah. anything like that i really do like this tool it's a great tool here it's handy to have on the farm we got a a small shovel here um the thing that we like about this shovel is it's not it doesn't have such a long handle because this kind of shovel you probably would use more for digging than actually shoveling things out of the way and it's just at least for a person my height, it's a per it's a perfect size shovel to the short shovel. dig in, toss away, and um, it's just it's, it's a good groundbreaker yeah, or great for, for digging holes to put your plants in. Yeah, all around kind of tool. Also, we have here um, this bucket of sand. We put sand in this bucket, and um, you can keep your tools. We got our hand trowels in here. You can keep them in here to keeps them nice and the blades from going rusty and dull and it's just a it's a handy little thing you know you have your little bucket of sand out in the garden stick your trowels in there and you got one right there and gardening can be a lot of hard work but with the right kind of tools it can be fun too we hope that our ideas we've given you here about tools will help you with your gardening adventure like to show you how you can make an instant garden with just a few things whether you dwell in the city or the country have a little bit of land or a big piece of land. Cecilia? All right well it's very simple. Um, the first step we have done already here as you can see is we've taken some cardboard some old cardboard boxes torn them apart and we laid them out flat here and you can lay them over any piece of ground it doesn't have to be tilled it doesn't have to be broken up. It doesn't have to be bare of grass. It can have grass on it. Any piece of ground. And you're gonna, the first layer you're gonna do is put down your cardboard here like we have done. And then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some leaves. It, doesn't this have another name, Cece? Lasagna gardening. Oh, the gardening, okay. So it's called like instant gardening or lasagna gardening, right? probably gets the name lasagna because we do layering like you do if you cook lasagna so our next layer is gonna be manure now if you don't have manure you can use you know anything around um, old leaves grass clippings from your lawn just rake up your glass grass clippings and that will work what else would you say mom purchase peat moss yeah, peat, peat, peat moss, moss is a good a good thing right. uh, any organic any organic material yeah or you could uh always ask to clean out your neighbor's barn right right, <laughs> right all right 
Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put some dirt on. Let's get that corner right there, covered, covered. Over the top of this layer of manure. Oh, what about some the straw? Dirt. We're going to do straw? You want to do straw? All right, we can do straw. And you can contain these, can't you? I believe so. Put it, you could if you want to make it real uh, formal and nice. You could put wood rocks boards around, around it, it, rocks around it. Make it look pretty, kind of do some landscaping. You could do this anywhere too, couldn't you? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. What we're going to use is some composted dirt. Now you, oh, if you don't have composted dirt, you can um, get potting some po potting soil oh. at your hardware store, your lo local uh, garden place center, and yeah. garden center. And we're just going to put that a nice layer on top because we're going to plant right into this, plant our plants right into this little instant garden we've made here. So and they'll grow very well in it. I think you've done this a lot. You've made a lot of instant beds. Tell them a little bit about how you can keep layering. And After you've planted it, you can go ahead and keep putting straw in there and different organic matter. And oh what God. you'll get is a real, real good, very good little square garden. So once you get your top layer of your dirt or your potting soil or your compost dirt, you are ready to plant your plant right in there. This is oh, moon and wonderful. stars, watermelons. See how it's speckled? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I we'll put some flowers in there too, couldn't we? And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, with my trowel, just pull apart all the layers that we have just put in there. Like you're going to, and we're going to plant our plant. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Pull it up. That's Make beautiful. sure it's That's standing beautiful. upright. <laughs> And you can do any kind of plants in a quick lasagna bed like this. You can plant dirt on here. You can plant your flowers or watermelon, squash, tomatoes, whatever you want to grow. You just put your plant in, your nice layered lasagna garden here, and you can grow this wherever you may be. Okay, so first I have um, my two sticks here and my string. This is to mark off my row so I don't get it crooked. Keep it straight. You want to hammer it in? Yeah. We're going to hammer it in right here first. Four feet away? Mm, say about three feet. Three feet. These measuring sticks are just two sticks that we found. And um, they don't have to be real big, just whatever you can find. We have some string here we tie to, you know, an end to each stick and um, it's about as long whatever however long you want your row is how long your string is so if your row is 25 feet then do 25 feet of string if your row is 50 feet then 50 feet of string um, do you want me to walk down with it so what you do first is you're gonna put it down here and I'm gonna hammer it into the ground it doesn't have to be tight just enough to stay in okay you want me to walk all the way down to the row with it now? Yeah. And ah. she's going to walk down the row with it. Maybe I should unwind it first. Yeah. Keeping the row straight. And uh, what this string does is help keep your row straight so you don't have green beans coming up like all crooked. Okay. Hammered in at this end. Okay. So we're going to start by making a shallow furrow here. You just need about, oh, I'd say about like that, about two and a half inches deep and you just follow right under your string here yeah no deeper than two and a half inches because um you know you don't have to plant your seeds very deep they're going to come up soon so you'll have green beans to harvest so now that we have a furrow going what we're going to do is start planting our seeds in here and um, we do them about three to four inches apart they don't have to be very far apart um, especially if you're doing bush beans and then you start covering them again with your hoe 
and you don't have to cover them very much, just enough so that the light won't get to them. You know, you don't need to make a big mound or anything, just to cover it with uh, just a little bit of dirt that you've pulled back with your hoe there. And this is how simple and easy planting green beans is. And really, you can plant not just green beans like this. Corn is the same way. Any seed like this is just as simple to plant into your ground. And to speed up germination, what you can do is the night before you go out in the garden to plant your seeds, soak them in a little bowl of water overnight. And that helps them sprout a lot faster in the ground after you plant them. Seeds can be planted any time of day. It doesn't matter if the sun's shining bright, it's not going to hurt the seeds. Before rain is the best time to plant seeds because then you got them watered right away. But if it's not going to rain for several days, it's still okay. You can plant them in. They'll be okay. Okay, now um, after we plant this row, we're going to space our rows apart like our next row, two and a half to three feet apart. It depends on if you're going to be using a tiller in your garden to go in between your rows to keep the weeds out, you want to do them more like three feet apart. But if you're just going to, you know, if you want to grow them closer together and not worry about using a tiller, you can do them two to two and a half feet apart. That way you can just walk down between your rows and pick your green beans and um, not have to worry about uh, needing more room between the rows. Also another good idea is you can plant your green beans in succession like you can plant one row and then two weeks later plant another row and then two weeks later plant another row so that you have green beans coming in um, two weeks or three weeks apart. That way you don't have a whole bunch of green beans all at one time that you don't know what to do with. Here we are coming to the end of the row here and I hope this has been helpful to y'all planting your green beans and yeah, you all have a good green bean harvest in your garden. It's very simple, not much to it. Like you see, you just make your furrow, put your seeds in, cover them up, wait for them to come up. Hope you enjoy. For this segment, we're going to teach you how to do the easiest potato patch ever. It's really, really easy. We're going to put down newspaper, and then we're going to put down our potatoes, and then we're going to put down straw. And you don't need any shovels or hoes or tillers. You just need a few simple things. So, Hana, if you want to help me, we'll put down the newspaper first. <clears throat> we're just going to spread it out like this. Are we going to spread it out really thick or thin or what? Um, not real thick, but not too thin either. Now, the newspaper Kinda. is to keep the weeds down, right? Yes. It helps keep the weeds down. It acts as a mulch. Right. Spread it down like this. Now, i got my potatoes here. And what I'm doing is, um, you want on each piece, if you're going to cut your potatoes, these are called eyes. And this is where the plant is actually going to come out here and sprout out if you want to cut them. If you cut your potatoes, you'll have more potatoes, but they're not going to be very big. But if you, you can leave them whole like this and just lay them down. And if you plant them like that, you'll get bigger potatoes, but not a huge yield. And um, since these aren't very big potatoes, I'm not going to cut them up. I'm just going to set them here on the newspaper about 9 to 12 inches. You don't have to be exact. It's just a really simple thing here. Put them down like this right on top of your newspaper. We're not going to cut any of these no, out? No, just leave okay. these whole. Something like that. Am I getting them far enough apart? Yeah, that's good. Oh, that one's a little big. See the knife? Kick it. See, so I'm going to cut it here. So I have two eyes on that one and several eyes on that one. 
So After you've put your potatoes down on the newspaper, we're going to get some straw. You don't have to use straw to cover them. You can use leaves or mulch or whatever you might have that could uh, break down because that's what you want it to do. It's going to break down over the potatoes. But we're going to use straw today if you want to bring that straw, huh? Mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't fall over. <laughs> Here, you pull and I'll hold it, okay? We'll just start right here. All right. So how thick are we gonna do the straw? Um, <clears throat> about, say, three or four inches thick. Just kinda spread it over it like that. Make sure you're covering your newspaper. And your potatoes. <laughs> right, the most important thing about potatoes is you don't want the light to get to them. They need to be in the dark. In a few weeks, after it rains and stuff, this straw is going to break down and we'll add four or five more in, uh, inches of straw or leaves or hay, whatever you have. And you just, as your potatoes grow, because the green plants will come up through this straw as they grow, you just add more straw or your leaves and keep adding. And pretty soon, you'll be ready to harvest your potatoes. And you didn't have to use a tiller or a shovel or a hoe. Nothing. All right, you want to keep your straw on your potatoes eight to 10 inches thick. And as time passes, it's gonna break down your straw wheel. You just add eight to 10 inches more, and um, pretty soon your plants are gonna, your green plant, potato plants, are gonna die off and turn yellow. And that's when you harvest. And harvesting is just as easy as planting. All you have to do is pull back your straw and you pick up your potatoes. That's all there is to it. They're not dirty because they haven't been in the dirt. They're ready to go and ready to cut up and put in your pot if that's what you want to do with them. <laughs> and this is the easiest potato patch ever. And although bugs are a reality, they aren't all bad. There are some good bugs. But as you can see here, we've got some cabbage worms eating holes in our cabbage plants here. And one of the best ways to keep away these worms is to put wood ashes down at the base around on the ground around your cabbage plants. It works amazing. It is so good to keep these worms away. So we're just gonna sprinkle some ashes here. Let me help with this. Like at the base, all around. Now how like thick it. would you do that? I think you would only want to do probably, what, an inch thick, maybe two inches thick, something okay. like that, yeah. yeah. Two inches is probably good. Spreading it around and it, I mean, yeah. I was amazed when we first tried this, I was like, okay, ashes, whatever. But we tried it and it worked really good. So the bugs don't like the wood ashes, but it's okay for the cabbage, right? Yeah, it's um, definitely to keep the bugs off and it doesn't bother the cabbage either. Now you probably, you know, you wouldn't have to do this around your corn or your bean plants, but it works great for cabbage. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, maybe we'll get rid of some worms, huh? <laughs> Another thing that we can do too is we can let this this uh, nice wormwood plant came up all by itself volunteer. I have a lot of uh, herbs that kind of detour the uh, cabbage worm and cabbage moth. And usually this would really, really help in the garden to have a wormwood like this. This The wormwood just does, as you see, this is not bothered at all by bugs and worms and things. So this is a real good thing to do too, is find out what your herbs are that would deter the uh, harmful bugs and insects. So Jasmine's gonna tell us about the beautiful nasturtiums. We planted these nasturtiums next to our squash plants because they're a wonderful thing to keep away different pests in the garden, especially aphids. And this squash looks to be doing pretty good. Let's go check out our other squash. Cece's gonna help me. We're gonna look for some um, 
squash bugs or squash bug eggs, which is a good thing to learn to recognize your different bugs and eggs and larvae so you know what you're dealing with. Look here, we have some um, holes. Something's been eating this. I think it's the squash bug. Do you see any eggs, Cece? Oh, wow, look. Here they are. See how they're all in a little cluster there? These are eggs from the squash bug. And we do not want these here. So we're just going to whoops, squish them with our them. fingernails. You want to squish some? I'm going to try. You could also just pick this whole leaf off if you don't want to squish them. But, um, you know, checking over your plants, it's a little, you know, time consuming, but it's well worth the effort so that you will be eating your veggies instead of the bugs. Thanks for joining us today. There's a special joy that comes from sitting down to a meal table full of food that you grew in your garden. We hope our garden has been an inspiration to you and that you'll grab a shovel and dig in. We'll see you next time right here at Homestead Blessings.